Hi scientists, this is Miss Baldry with the Science Station. So this week our video is going to be on learning about Utah deserts. And we have already learned that there are three major ecosystems or habitats um, in the state of Utah. And we've learned about forests and wetlands and deserts. And remember that there are a lot of mountains in the forest and that gets the most precipitation at 30 to 60 inches a year. And the wetlands get about 20 inches of precipitation a year. And the deserts are the most dry and they get 10 or less inches of precipitation a year. And the plants and animals are really special in our deserts because they have what we call adaptations. So they've had to change and um, survive a little bit differently than in other ecosystems because it is so dry there. So um, one of the adaptations or how they've changed to meet the needs of their environment is that they have to get by with very little water. So some of the plants that you're looking at have really long, long root systems um, deep within the earth so they can collect um, water deep within the earth. They also may have waxy leaves um, and that just means that there's like um, a wax on the outside of their leaf system so it will prevent the loss of water so it will hold in water. As you notice from the plants that are being shown that we've got several cactuses or cacti and a cactus is going to have really sharp needles to protect them from predators and they are some of the plants that have that waxy coating on the outside to protect them. Um, our grasses are going to be lighter colored to protect them from the sun and I love that yucca plant and that is found in southern Utah and that's got kind of long um, spiny leaves on that. So let's go ahead and look at some of the animals that we would find in Utah's deserts. All right, so here's some of our desert animals that are found in Utah. And we get a few small mammals, um, different rodents like the prairie dog and maybe ferrets that feed after prairie dogs. But prairie dogs and some of the other um, different animals they burrow or they dig holes underneath the ground to hide from the hot sun during the day so the majority of animals in our deserts are insects and reptiles and so we'll have a few birds like at the barn owl you might get a red tail hawk or different types of hawks um, but you see we've got um, rattlesnakes and just different types of snakes different lizards like the gila monster is one of them that we have. Um, scorpions, just different insects. We've got a desert tortoise here and a kangaroo rat. Um, also keep in mind that our deserts are different than um, the sand dune hot hot deserts that you see pictures of with camels. So we don't have camels here in Utah. And during the summer months our deserts can get really hot but our deserts are known as a rocky coal desert because it gets really hot during the day during um, the summer months but it gets really cold at night and so we don't have those piles of sand dunes um, very much here in Utah so ours is more of considered a rocky desert with clay soil and um, salt flats and whatnot all right, fourth graders, so we're going to watch a couple of short video clips of some different animals that you would find in a Utah desert. One of them is a mountain lion. The mountain lion, powerful, graceful, and adaptable. They're known by several names, cougars, panthers, or pumas. Lions prey on deer, elk, bighorn sheep, small animals, reptiles, birds, livestock, and even pets. An adult lion eats 8 to 10 pounds of meat a day. The cats are incredibly sly hunters and stay low and move slowly until they are in range of their chosen victims. Then they launch their attack. 
The mountain lion tends to be active at dawn and dusk and at night when they roam their area in search of prey. The mountain lion has a range of 50 to 100 square miles. The size of the area is pretty much determined by the abundance of prey. The mountain lion has a smaller core area for birthing and resting. The extended area is for hunting. You can see the size of their paw. This lion is at the Living Desert Museum. You can see that paw is a lethal weapon. For more information on the mountain lion, click on the links below this video. Types of rabbits that you'll find in the desert are the cottontail and the black tailed jackrabbit. Cottontails are named after their tail, which is shaped like a cotton ball. The black tailed jackrabbits are true hares because, unlike the cottontail rabbits, they do not feel fat. The mother simply chooses a place of her liking, and the young are born full leaf birds. Their eyes are wide open. Large thin ears are adaptation for cooling in the summer heat of the desert. Rabbits have many natural enemies coyotes, bobcats, foxes, or dolls, hawks, and snakes. Prey on both the young and the old. Rabbits are strictly vegetarian, eating a great variety of herbs and shrubs. They're no fun to have around your garden. For more information on the rabbits, click on the links below. The long-tailed weasel occupies a large territorial range. In its home territory in the southwestern United States, the long-tailed weasel occupies a variety of habitat. It may take up residence in several dens near streams, grasslands, shrubs, or wooden areas. Given its high rate of metabolism and energy, the weasel lives to hunt and eats lots of food. The gophers and other small animals are the main source of its food. The gopher seen here always closes up his hole to protect himself from weasels and other predators that invade the narrow dens. This particular weasel saw a dog and went into hiding in a cement block. He didn't want to come out because he knew that the dog was nearby. We removed the dog so he had some freedom, but he then went in an area where there were several traps and got himself caught. You can see here, he's very nervous and wants to escape from this trap and is looking for every way possible way to get out. He was released in an area where we have too many gophers. For more information on the weasel, Click on the links below this video. A coyote hunts both night and day, running swiftly, catching its prey easily. It is able to exist on whatever the area offers in the way of food. Here's one eating seeds from a palm tree. To survive, a coyote can and will change its breeding habits, its diet and hunting strategy. They feed on fruit, squirrels, rabbits, and small pets. Here, a family of coyote is getting fruit from a fig tree at night. Let's watch them at work. Here's 
a sick coyote with mange, a skin disease caused by tiny mites, which causes the fur to drop off. Most coyotes are in good health, so they can find food on their own. The best way to keep the coyote out of your area and in the wilderness is not to feed them. If they can't find food in the area, then they will go where they can find it. So let's keep them in their natural state. For more information on the coyote, click on the links below this video. There are 32 known species of rattlesnakes with many. There are 32 known species of rattlesnakes with many subspecies and color variations. The shapes of the rattlesnake's head and the rattle on their tail make them easy to identify. Rattlesnakes have triangular shaped heads, which are broader than their necks. These two snakes look similar, except for the shape of their heads. The one on the right is not a rattlesnake. They mostly hunt at night and rest during the day. Rattlesnakes only hunt for prey that they can swallow. Rattlesnakes have very long curved fangs that lie parallel to their jaw. The fangs are hollow, which allows the snake to inject venom through the fang into their victim. The venom is a mixture of enzymes that destroy blood and paralyze nerves. The rattlesnakes have a dual vision system. In addition to their eyes, they have a sensory organ in the upper jaw, which you can actually see heat images. Here is an example of a rabbit being seen by the infrared vision. Mormon pioneers named this yucca species the Joshua tree because it mimicked the Old Testament prophet Joshua, waving them on. The Joshua tree grows in the Mojave Desert at elevations from two to 6,000 feet. Its height varies from 15 to 40 feet. The Joshua tree is the largest of the yuccas and naturally grows only in the Mojave Desert. The tree's flowers can only be pollinized by the yucca moth. No other animal visiting the blooms transfers the pollen from one flower to another. Without the moth's pollinization, the Joshua tree could not reproduce, nor could the moth whose larva would have no seeds to eat. If you would like to grow a Joshua tree, Desert USA's online store sells the seeds. For more information on the Joshua tree or its seeds, click on the links below this video. All right, fourth grade scientists. So you've learned about different plants and animals that live in our Utah deserts. So we will be memorizing some of these and working with these in class.